Okay, hey guys, we're back again, and we're going to talk a little bit more about gravitational potential energy. And try to take the idea of gravitational potential energy a little bit further. And in order to do that, we're going to look at several different problems. Several, well, actually three, three types of problems using the gravitational potential energy equation. Well, if you recall, back a few video clips ago, uh, I introduced you to the magic triangle to help you skip a little bit of algebra to rearrange an equation. And normally we had that, that triangle divided up into, into three parts because we were using equations like force equals mass times acceleration, which had three variables in it. But now we're going to be looking at this equation, the gravitational potential energy equation, that says GPE, gravitational potential energy, equals mass times gravity times height. So instead of dividing this up into three sections, we're actually going to divide it up into four sections. And the way this works is we know that here that gravity, uh, gravitational potential energy, GPE, equals mass times gravity times height. So that gives us just a, a simple way to rearrange this equation to solve well, really, we can solve the equation four different ways. And given any particular situation, we could solve for gravitational potential energy if we're given mass, gravity, and height. We could also solve for mass if we were given gravitational potential energy, gravity, and height. And we could solve for height if we were giving, given gravitational potential energy, mass, and gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, uh, and then, of course, also because, hey, not all problems happen on the Earth. We might have to solve for the acceleration due to gravity. We might be talking about something's gravitational potential energy on the moon, which has one-sixth as much gravity as the Earth. The gravitational acceleration on the moon is 1.66 meters per second squared. So we might actually have to find in a problem, find the acceleration due to gravity. And the acceleration due to gravity would be gravity equals GPE divided by mass times height. Remember that these vertical lines here stand for multiplication, and this is a division line. So when we're using this to help us rearrange the equation, we need to remember that. Well, let's take a look at, at three different situations. And the three situations are going to be similar. We're going to be working with an object. We'll call it a ball. And we're going to take this object and we're going to put it up on top of the shelf. And we're going to look at three different problems very similar to that. Okay. And in the first problem we're going to calculate gravitational potential energy. Uh, so we need some information. We're going to assume it's on the Earth so we know what the acceleration due to gravity is, 9.8 meters per second squared. We're going to give this ball a mass, and I'm going to give it a mass of 10 kilograms. And we're going to give the, the, sh the shelf up here a height above the floor of 3 meters. Well, if we're going to calculate gravitational potential energy, pretty darn easy to do here. We simply set up the problem, gravitational potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. Second step, mass is 10 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, and I said it was on the Earth, so we have 9.8 meters per second squared times the height, and we have the height of 3 meters. So when we work this out, and I'm going to round this 9.8 off to 10 meters per second squared. Uh, and I can do that because I really only have one significant digit. So when we work this out, the gravitational potential energy that the ball will have when I bring it up here and set it on top of that shelf, gravitational potential energy, the energy that's stored is going to be 10 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. That gives us 100. And now we multiply that by 3, so it's going to be 300. 
and this is kilogram meters squared per second squared or newton meters kilogram meters per second squared times meters would be newton meters so I could write that as newton meters or I could write it as 300 joules so to pick this ball up and put it up on the shelf I'm going to do 300 joules of work on that ball giving the ball 300 joules of energy and then storing that energy at that height above the floor well let's look at a different situation in the second situation here we're going to be finding the mass of this object so we don't know what the mass is we're going to have to figure that out well if you look at this equation up here in order to solve for the mass we have to have three other variables well I'm going to give you the gravitational potential energy let's say that when the ball is picked up and set up on the shelf it has a gravitational potential energy equal to 200 joules and we're going to assume that the height of the shelf right here is going to be 2 meters well we also know that since I'm telling you that this is on the earth that the gravitational attraction is 9.8 meters per second squared so we know that also so let's go ahead and solve for the mass of the ball well mass is equal to gravitational potential energy divided by gravity times height let me show you that again mass is equal to gravitational potential energy divided by gravity times height so mass is equal to GPE divided by gravity times height now we're going to plug some numbers and units in here the mass then is equal to the gravitational potential energy and you can see that that was 200 joules divided by gravity which is 9.8 meters per second squared times the height and the height I gave you was 2 meters so let's see 9.8 I'm going to round that to 10 10 times 2 gives me 20 and 200 divided by 20 is 10 so the mass of this object is 10 kilograms now why does that work out to kilograms well keep in mind that a joule is a newton meter which is also a kilogram meter per second squared meter so what happens is everything cancels out except for the kilogram meters cancels out <clears throat> second squared cancels out and that leaves kilograms and that kilogram comes down here to our answer so there is the answer 10 kilograms okay let's take a look at the third problem over here in the third problem we're going to find the height that this object was lifted so let me go ahead and give you the mass of this object I'm going to give you a mass so I'll just make one up here I'm going to give it a mass of 20 kilograms and I'm also going to give you the gravitational potential energy the gravitational potential energy when we pick this ball up and set it up on top of the shelf we've done 500 joules of work and stored 500 joules of gravitational potential energy so and again I'm gonna assume that this is on the earth so we're gonna use 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration due to gravity 
So let's go ahead and set the problem up. Well, now we're going to solve for height, so the first thing I write down here is just h equals. And let's go over here and, and figure out how we're going to do this. Height is equal to gravitational potential energy divided by mass times gravity. So height is equal to gravitational potential energy divided by mass times gravity. So let's go ahead and plug some numbers in. The gravitational potential energy that I gave you in the problem was 500 joules. And the mass is 20 kilograms. And let's see what else we need the gravity. And of course, like I said, this is on the Earth, so we're going to use 9.8 meters per second squared. Solve for the height. That's 20 times 10. Well, 20 times 10 is 200. And then 500 divided by 200 is going to be 2.5. And let's figure out here what the unit is. Remember that that joule is really a newton meter. And uh, let's see, a newton meter. And that kilogram meter per second squared kilograms times meters per second squared, that is a newton. So that cancels out. That cancels out. It leaves meters, and that meter comes down here to our answer, and we know that the height is measured in meters. And also keep in mind, you can't write that number down without the unit. You have to derive the unit in the answer. Otherwise, the answer is wrong. So the answer here, the height, is 2.5 meters. So if you pick this object up, 20 kilogram object up, set it on top of the shelf. You do 500 joules of work on the object, storing, therefore, 500 joules of gravitational potential energy when you place it at the top of the shelf. When the object, when the object is lifted up, you lose 500 joules of energy, you give it to the object. That's why it's stored up there as gravitational potential energy. And the height that you would have to lift it in order to store that much energy would have to be 2.5 meters. So there are three simple problems dealing with gravitational potential energy.